Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to go over configuring OpenFiler. Uh, yes, last video when we left off we just finished installing OpenFiler. Um, so we'll just go through the menus real quick. Uh, here's the status menu. Here's where you can see the kernel version you're running. You can see you know, we're running OpenFiler. It's been up for three minutes. Uh, you can see the um, hardware information on your machine, etc. Uh, we go to the system tab you can see here's your open filer name, here's where it's going for DNS. You can see, you know, all our settings are done through DHCP, so uh, as you can see down here, so we don't really have to change anything on here uh, yet. We will be doing something on here in a moment. Uh, volumes. Uh, this will list all of the volumes that we've created. So far we have not created any. We'll get to that in a moment. Quota. Uh, the quota tab is where you would set uh, quotas for users. So, for example, if you've got user A, and you only want them to use no more than 500 megabytes on the server, you would specify a quota on the quota tab. So uh, next is the shares tab. On the shares tab you will see all of the network shares that have been created. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. The services tab. Uh, the services tab is where you would enable and disable various services. You can see there's uh, Samba, there's NFS, there's FTP, iSCSI, etc. Uh, so for anytime there's a new service that you want to use, you're going to want to go to this page and enable a you know whatever service it is that you want to use. Next is accounts. Now accounts is actually where we're going to start today. Um, in order to connect to the open filer, you'll need an, a valid username and password. Uh, there's two options. You can use LDAP or you can use Windows Domain Controller Authentication. If you ha already have an LDAP server set up, you would configure that here. If, or if you're using Active Directory, you would configure that down in the lower section. Uh, today we're going to be using a local LDAP server on OpenFiler. Uh, so we will check Use LDAP and say Use Local LDAP Server. We're not going to use TLS and we're going to use uh, we're going to log into SMB server to root DN. That means that uh, we'll be using this um, for our SMB as well. So the first thing, um, if you try to use your open filer like this, it's not going to work. Uh, we have to put a little bit more in the root bind DN. So what we're going to enter is just DC equals open filer, comma now our base DN is example dc.com so we're just going to copy this paste this down here now you could go through and change this if your uh, internal domain name is something other than example.com then you would put in other information in here so at this point this is all set up so let's scroll down and say submit and it will now apply our changes so we'll just wait for the page to refresh, and it is, has refreshed. Now the next service, we've configured our LDAP uh, setup, but the next thing to do is actually go to the Services tab and enable LDAP server, which as actually you can see it actually enabled itself. So we're set. So now that LDAP is working, we can go back to the Accounts tab. And over here, under Administration on the right, we can click on Administration. Now the first thing we want to do is create a group. Um, each, every user you create goes into a group, so you'll need to create a group before you can create a user. Uh, as you do the access control in your various shares, you'll do it based on groups typically instead of users, so you can it makes administration easier. So let's call a group name uh, just uh, Normal User. and say add group. Now you see I've created a group called normal users. To create another group I just enter it in here, click add group and create as many groups as you want. Next set step is to click on the user administration area up here and now let's create a user. I'll call it Sean P because that's what I'm logged on to my local machine as. Enter my password. and I'm going to add myself to the normal users group and click add. Alright, so now I've created a user and I've added it to the normal users group. Now the next step is uh, we need to go over to our volumes. Now 
when at the moment we have no volumes. A volume is where you actually store all of your data. Uh, well, sort of. Uh, there's you, there's several layers in this whole setup. You've got a disk, your physical disk. Then you've got a volume that you create on the physical disk, and then you create a partition on top of that volume, and then you share parts of that partition. Uh, so let, the first step is we actually have to create a volume. And here are our two disks. I, if you remember from our last video, uh, this is our system drive. We have three partitions. Uh, if you click on view, you can see the partitions. Uh, these partitions are our boot, our system, and our swap partitions. Now this one has no partitions. This is where we're actually going to store all of our data. So let's click view here and you can see there's no partitions. To create a partition we'll click on dev S, uh, db and you can see 100% of the disk is currently free. If you come down here we will create, we're going to create a physical volume and now you don't actually specify the space per megabyte, you specify it per cylinder. Uh, so let's say we only want to take half the drive. We'll put in 1300 cylinders out of 2610. You see we get about half the drive, 9.96 gigabytes. So that's fine for us. Let's click create. And now you see our uh, partition has been created. So the next step is actually to go over to the volume groups section over here on the right. And we have to create a volume group. So let's just call it vol group one. And we select the physical volumes to add to the volume group. And we've now created a volume group. So uh, you can add more than one volume to a volume group, physical volume to a volume group. Uh, but for now, we're just doing the, our one volume. Now the, uh, the next step is to actually create a, um, create a uh, partition on this volume. So next we want to say add volume again. And now you can see we've got a volume group here that we can select. And down here is where we'll call our, you know, they, they call it a volume in here, but it's really a partition within this uh, volume. So we will call. Let's call this one iSCSI because this we're going to share as an iSCSI uh, X target, and we'll call it iSCSI target, and we'll say give it two gigabytes ish. Now the file system is going to be iSCSI because this is going to be an iSCSI LUN. So let's say correct create, and now you see. 20% of our 10 gigabyte volume has been devoted to our iSCSI um, volume. Now the next step, so now let's create one more volume because we're going to need it later. And let's call this one file share. And we'll call it my file share. And we'll give it say two gigabytes as well. And let's make this an ext3 partition. So ext3, I typically use ext3 and iSCSI. Uh, iSCSI is if you want to do a LUN, ext3 is if you want to do an SMB or an NFS share. So let's say create, and XFS is just another file system type. Alright, now you see we've got an iSCSI volume and a file share volume.